Roger Brooke Taney was born in March 17, 1777. No, not 666, but close to it. In Calvert County, Maryland. No, not the land of Mary's, I mean Maryland, where everyone says the letter O louder than any other letter. He is one of six children, and the second son to a successful farmer. Not a normal farmer, a tobacco farmer. He had been educated in France, but later attended college in Pennsylvania instead of taking on the family business of farming tobacco. Roger was married to Anne Key, whose brother was Francis Scott Key, who, as you may all know, wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Well, I didn't know, but that's enough about his family and friends. Now on to the important stuff. Not that his wife was not important, I'm saying his important role as a chief justice and his benefits towards our nation. Oh, and yeah, Taney was a member of the Conservative Property Conscious Federalist Party until 1812, until the party opposed the war against England. He returned to Maryland House of Delegates in 1816, and even before becoming the Supreme Court's fifth chief justice in 1836, he served as an Attorney General and Secretary of the Treasury in 1821. That's when he went to study with Judge Jeremiah Chase, who was also a very successful Chief Justice. But that's for another day. He was also recognized as an excellent lawyer. Juries were impressed with his sense of fair play and his courtesy towards opposing attorneys. In 1827, he was appointed Attorney General of Maryland. By this time, he had aligned himself with Andrew Jackson, a leader of the Democratic Party. Taney especially made history in 1857 with the Dred Scott case by ruling that black slaves were not citizens of the United States. This controversial historic figure died on 8, October 12, 1864 in Washington, D.C. Hustler Magazine versus Falwell. The question that was argued was, does the First Amendment freedom of speech protection extend to making of patently offensive statements about public figures, resulting perhaps in their suffering emotional distress? The question was argued November 1983. They issued a parody of, of an advertisement that included the name and picture of the respondent. The ad was supposed to mimic ads that focus on someone's first trying to 